Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. I'm in On One Photo Raw 2021 today, and man, there's so many good masking options in On One. That's what I'm really having fun with lately. I've done a few videos you can find in that On One playlist there, where I've talked about some of the powerful masking that they have. There's a perfect brush, there's an AI quick mask, things like that. But today I'm talking about color range masking. This is a really powerful and useful tool in On One. I'm gonna get into it. Here's a photo. I'm gonna start by just doing a couple of basic edits here in the develop module. I'm in tone and color. Add a little bit of contrast. I'm gonna take these highlights down and I'm just gonna bump the midtones and the shadows just fractionally like a nine or a 10 each just to kind of get the photo a little bit balanced. So if you look at the before, there you go. And the after, there you go. It's a little bit better. I got a lot I want to do, and that's where color range masking comes in because um, it really, as the name implies, it allows you to mask based on specific color ranges, and that's what I want to do here. So I want to kind of attack this photo. I'm going to start with the color enhancer tool. There you go. And to get into masking, you click on the little masking icon here, and color range masking is right down here. So all you do is you turn on the color range mask by clicking that button. You can see you have an eyedropper, and then you also have access to this color uh, wheel thing here. I'm not going to use that, but note that you can go in and select a color based on that if you would like to. However, I really like to use the eyedropper, so I'm just going to click on that, and I'm going to come over here now what I want to do is pick kind of the blue color because what I'm wanting to do here is work on the sky. Um, but as you can see, there's blue in a lot of the photo. It was blue hour. It's very blue like in the pavement and all that. I don't want to get that. I just want to get the stuff up top. So I'm going to do one click in the sky and tell it that's the color I'm looking for. And you can see a mask is automatically created. If I click on view, you can see what is done. Remember, white conceals, black reveals. No, I got that backwards. Hold on. <laughs> white reveals, black conceals, which means the mask has been created to reveal all my edits in the white area because I chose blue, and that's where all the blue is showing up, and conceal it where it's black. So like these distant trees and some of the parts of the architecture and all that. But if you want to adjust that, and I do, the key here is this slider, this color range slider. As I said, it's picking up a lot of blue in this photo. So if I drag it to the right, it's getting more and more of that blue. But what I want to do is go to the left because I kind of want to try to isolate that sky. And there you go. That's doing a pretty good job of isolating the sky. However, I want to click paint in and I'm going to shrink my brush just a little bit and I'm going to come paint it into the sky as well because this sky is blue or should be as far as I'm concerned. So I've just painted it into the sky there and you can hit shift X to go to paint out and you can see it's picking up blue still in these statues so you can come over here and customize that a little bit more by painting over that with the paint out brush to basically remove it now i'm not going to do every single bit of that i just wanted to show you that you can do that in order to further customize the look and so as you can see now remember white reveals black conceals so the edits i make to color enhancer are going to be revealed where it's white which is pretty much the sky, which is what I was trying to do because I wanted to isolate that section of blue. And like I said, that's where a color range mask comes in really handy because as you can see, there's a lot of blue in the foreground. So I could do a detailed mask and do a perfect brush and go around all that stuff. Or this is quicker, I think. Pick the color, just go in, make that adjustment, move the slider accordingly. And if you need to, like I did, take the brush and paint it in or out as you see fit. It's very quick and very powerful. So now that I'm done with the masking, I'm gonna go into the tool itself. And what I wanna do is take the temperature to about a negative 30. And I'm gonna take the saturation up about a nine or so, something like that. And vibrance up a little bit as well, like a 10 or 11. So let me turn this off. If you look at just the sky, there it is before. And there it is after. Slightly bluer, slightly more saturated, slightly more vibrant. It's all slight. I'm not trying to overdo it, but I have isolated that sky and that's going to come in really handy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here back to this mask and I'm going to click copy. I'm going to get a new filter and then I'm going to paste that mask and use it again. This filter is going to be tone enhancer and I might as well just go ahead and paste the mask, click paste. And as I click view, you can see this is where the mask has been just copied and pasted. So again, white reveals black conceals. So these edits will once again appear uh, or uh, be shown in the sky. I'm going to click view to hide that 
and I'm going to click on the mask to just hide that section. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to take the exposure down slightly. Whoa, that's too much. Uh, something about like that. And I'm going to pull the highlights down slightly as well. And the shadows just a little bit too. So that's really it. All I did is just kind of darken this guy. So let me turn this off. There it is before and there it is after. Now, in the past, without having this tool, one of the things I would have done to adjust the lightness in the sky would be to reduce the luminance of the blue, which you can do with the color tools. But that's going to impact the blue across the entire photo. So again, I've isolated the blue in the sky so that it's not impacting the blue that's in the stonework. Again, it's more precise. It's a great little tool to have handy. And I'm ready to go do a few more things. Now this time, I'm going to get Tone Enhancer again. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to paste the mask again. But this time, I'm going to invert it. So let me click View. And there you go. So now I've basically flipped it. And so now I'm obscuring everything that's happened in the sky. I'm leaving that out, in other words, of what I'm doing next. And all these edits are going to apply where it's white. White reveals, black conceals. So because I got the mask done so well the first time, I'm able to flip it now and do this other section, which is going to make it easier for me to adjust the foreground, basically all the man-made stuff, and leave this guy alone. So close the masking menu. I'm going to take the exposure down slightly. I keep going too far. About a 0.4. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. And I'm going to pull up shadows slightly, maybe about like that, and blacks as well. Something about like that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to pull back the exposure just a little bit, maybe something more like that. So again, I'm impacting the foreground. And let me turn this off. There it is before, and there it is after. Not a big deal. Fairly subtle, but it's something I wanted to do. Now I'm going to use this mask again, so I'm going to click Copy, and I'm going to go get Color Enhancer again. There you go. And once again, I'm going to click Paste. So remember, this is the inverted mask I just copied from the last filter, and you can see it's impacting the areas that are in white. So let me hide that, close the masking tool, and what I want to do is just bump up the temperature. I really want to warm up some of that section there because I don't want it to be as blue as it was. I think something about like that, and maybe a little bit of tint as well, something about like that. So there you go. Let me show you the before and after for Color Enhancer. Again, I was able to isolate this foreground, all the man-made stuff, the sculptures, the building, the walkway, that sort of thing, because of using the color range mask for the blue on that very first filter. And now I'm just kind of flipping back and forth using the mask again or inverting it and copying and pasting. So there it is before this filter, and there it is after. Slightly warmer and therefore slightly brighter. It's pulling some of the blue out of that, and I think it's looking nice. Now I'm just going to get dynamic contrast and just add a little bit of that to the overall photo. I think something about like that ought to work. I'm just adding a little bit of pop. Now if I turn this off, you can see before and after. That's going into the sky. If you didn't want it to go into the sky, I could just come in here and paste that mask again because remember, the mask I used for that last filter was already selecting this area, again, because I customized it with the color range mask on the very first filter. So in this case, I can just add dynamic contrast just to this foreground area like that. So there it is before dynamic contrast, and there it is after. And the last thing I'll probably do here is just add one more filter and add Tone Enhancer, which for me is just a great way to kind of wrap up a photo because it's kind of like going back to the Develop module, you know, because it has a lot of the same tools, contrast, highlight, shadows, all that kind of stuff. I like to come in sometimes and just adjust these things, maybe something about like that, maybe pull those highlights down, tiny bit of shadow bump as well. And if I turn it off, there it is before, and there it is current state. Again, fairly subtle, just a minor final touch up, but that's how I'm using color range masks. They're really powerful, they're super easy, and they just give you so much control over the photos. I'm having a lot of fun exploring all these super powerful and frankly amazing masking options that are in on one. That is the color range mask, my friends. Again, simple, easy, just pick a color, isolate it, use the slider to adjust where it's appearing in the photo and how much of that color a bleed, I would call it, um, is is you know going into your mask like to the right with the color range slider you get a lot more of that color bleeding into other parts of the photo to the left it kind of condenses that and really helps you isolate more specific areas and then don't hesitate to use your paint in or paint out brush to further customize it and get your mask just right and as you saw i did it once and then i used it four more times just either the same mask or the inverted version of that mask to quickly powerfully and frankly easily get control over the final look of my photo that's how it works, my friend. Thanks for watching Color Range Mask. So cool, so fun, so powerful, frankly, so easy. 
That's it for this one, my friends. Thanks for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there. Have fun editing. I'll see you in the next video. And adios.